Remember Star Wars? Remember how good Star Wars was? Remember how much we enjoyed it? And then Kathleen Kennedy came along and we found out that the Force wasn't the Force. The Force was female, right? Right? All those years, the Force was always, it was actually female. And, and women drove Star Wars. Uh, men were evil, stupid, or both in Star Wars. Uh, they couldn't be... They couldn't accomplish any tasks without women, right? Remember that? No? Okay. Remember how good the MCU was? We had Iron Man, we had Thor, we had Cap, we had Black Widow, Hulk, and then remember we got Scarlet Witch and Wasp and Valkyrie and Captain Marvel and female Hawkeye and female Thor and She-Hulk and... Oh, that was... And, and female Black Panther and... Now we got, oh, you, you didn't like that because, it, well, you're a bigot, okay? You're a bigot. I just want you to know that. If you don't like that, you're a bigot. If, well, according to smooth brain idiot leftist intersectional feminists, you know, and, and MCU stands. So Star Wars, the MCU, those have been just decimated by identity politics. And if you don't think so at this point, I mean, and, I, and please spare me the... Well, politics have always been in comic books. You obviously didn't read comic. I, I, yeah, I wasn't like a every week comic reader. I read some comics. I own comics. I, I understand the political messaging that can be written into something when it's written by somebody with talent and not just an activist pretending to be a writer. But the problem with modern entertainment is we have activists, not writers, and people want to push an ideological uh, stance ahead of entertaining the audience, which is what we're paying you for. We're not paying for a TED Talk uh, performed by a moron. No, we're, we're paying to be entertained. See, and that's what these companies have forgotten. And DC was just taken over by James Gunn and Peter Saffron. And according to James Gunn, DC's future is female. Comicbook.com, the future of the DC universe needs to be female. Nope. Uh, yeah, because we really, really have been clamoring for that. Isn't that what they just got rid of? They were going to do the Batgirl and Supergirl thing instead of Batman and Superman. And, yeah, that got axed. Um, I don't understand what this is. <laughs> do they need a few more uh, good female characters over DC? Yes, because Harley Quinn is utter shit. Nobody cares. Uh, except outside of girls with daddy issues. And, and, and thought cosplayers. Harley Quinn is pretty well trash. Um, the Harley Quinn movie that Birds of Prey that supposedly introduced all the girl bosses was garbage. Uh, it was horribly written. Christina Hodson did a shite job. The movie was garbage. Um, but we'll talk about this article. See what characters they bring up. One more thing. Black Canary does not actually need to be black. Um, just because the character's title has black in the name doesn't mean they have to be, well, you know what I'm saying. The future of the DC Universe needs to be female. This is written by Nicole Drum. I feel like we've covered a Nicole Drum article before. Nicole Drum is a staff writer for comicbook.com. She's a big fan of Batman, vampires, and weird food, exploring representations of trauma and mental health in the entertainment landscape. Namor is number one fan. She's presently reside. She presently resides in Kansas, but does not, in fact, know Superman. What the hell is even that? With January rapidly coming to a close, the revival of James Gunn and Peter Saffron's DC studio slate could come at any time. With Gunn having previously confirmed that he and Saffron will reveal the first few projects from the first chapter of the new DC Universe sometime this month. And while fans are waiting with bated breath, eagerly anticipating the announcement and making their best guesses as to what will be revealed, we'll talk about that at the end of the video as they did reveal that. Um, when that announcement finally comes, there's an argument to be made for something the DC Universe needs to do with his next iteration. More female characters and stories centering around them. This just goes with the theme of everything else in society. You can't have stories without female-centric stories, right? Right? You just have to shoehorn those in even if they don't make sense or else you're a misogynist. It's not a lie if you believe it. That's right. The future of the DC Universe needs to be female. And it largely comes down to three major points. The first is the existing DC Universe has only scratched the surface in terms of female characters with interesting and complex stories that contribute to the larger universe. The second 
as we've already seen female-led stories in D.C. on the small screen and somewhat paved the way for the expansion into the D.C.U. Okay, they're talking about the Arrowverse, uh, the CW-verse mostly, and that was largely shit. If they're talking about Batwoman, hi, there's no bigger Batwoman expert than me. I covered Batwoman 80 some vi 83 videos uh, every episode. Um, yeah, it, it was bad. It was terrible. And the female-led shows on the CW, what are, what are you, why? Those are garbage. Those are written by Caroline Dries or Band of Morons, produced by Berlanti Productions. Garbage activist writers, not actual writers. Perhaps most important, there's an audience for these stories with women being a fastest growing demographic in the comic book entertainment as well as the performance of such films as Wakanda Forever, proof that female-driven stories are successful at the box office and beyond. Okay, so Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, it was female-led because they refused to recast it. There was no lead for that movie. There was no lead for Wakanda Forever. Shuri wasn't the lead. Queen Mada wasn't the lead. It was just a ensemble cast of ancillary characters with no lead. They could have recast that, but, you know, here we are. And it'll always be funny because Black Panther Wakanda Forever was beaten by Minions 2, The Rise of Gru at the box office by $100 million. <laughs> And that's the fifth entry into that franchise. And the Black Panther is the second entry into the Black Panther mythos. And it doesn't have a Black Panther, so what did you expect? DC has a wealth of female characters, not just Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn. I wouldn't even put Harley Quinn on the same level as Wonder Woman. I, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Well, Harley Quinn is nothing more than a marketing, a marketing tool. She's, she's not a compelling character. Like, what... I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't buy into that hype at all. She's just trash. It's not an exaggeration to say when it comes to comic book adaptations, superhero stories, it's largely been a man's world. Well, it, that's problematic, right? Particularly when it comes to DC side of things. Yes, Wonder Woman has had her own franchise of films. Harley Quinn's had a moment to shine in the female-centric film, which was trash. Not only do those two characters merely scratch the surface of interesting heroes and villains, in the DC Universe, characters like Zatanna, never heard of her, Supergirl, okay, Batgirl, okay, Catwoman, Catwoman's been around for quite a while, had her own movie, uh, Hawkgirl and Black Canary are all major characters with rich comic book histories and stories that would make great film projects that could work well in the larger connected universe. Digging even deeper, there are some more obscure characters with great potential as well. Fire and Ice are both notable examples of characters with great story potential that could work very well in a larger context. And once you start building a DC universe with more expanded female characters than what we've seen in the past, the doors open for even lesser known characters to appear in supporting roles, only enriching the storytelling environment as we move into stories centered around major male characters. It's a win for everyone. And it's also why the cancellation of Batgirl remains such a heartbreak for many fans. That movie was going to be shit! Like, I don't understand. It's just because the, the, the main character has a gash doesn't mean it's a good story. I hate to put it in such crude terms, but that's since that's what these people understand is that if you have a pee-pee, it's going to be a bad story because men bad. Uh, if, you, if you have a vagina, it's going to be a good story because women are good. They're, yes, okay. So these obscure characters they're talking about, I'm sure they do have fans. But... Um, does does any is anybody clamoring for a Zatanna movie or a Hawk Girl movie? And there might be you know a small contingent of fans who are, but does that mean that it's going to succeed and build to something bigger and work? No, it doesn't. I, I just that that the insistence, you know these these projects they want to make them so they insist upon themselves. It's like you have to watch this. This is the most important thing. It's like the Eternals. To the gay community. Oh, it's saving lives. What? How did the Eternals save lives? It lost money. I mean, the movie was shit. It just objectively was... I, I, I was... I didn't fall asleep during that one like I did Shang-Chi, but I wanted to. Television has already given us female-centered superhero stories, and they're good. Okay, let's see which ones they list here, because I went through the CW stuff, and that's not good. Arrow was good, and then they're like, no, it has to be centered around females. It's like, wait, what? While DC's theatrical offerings have been largely male-centric, on the small screen, female heroes and characters have had a strong presence, not just in DC, on the Marvel side of things. And see, they have to correlate Marvel into this, too. 
Shows like Jessica Jones, never watched it. Agent Carter, never seen it. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., have seen four episodes. WandaVision, it was bad. She-Hulk Attorney at Law was horrible. All told strong and engaging stories that were... No. No. She-Hulk didn't tell a strong story. She's nothing but a derivative character that could have been great, but was written poorly just by a bunch of bitter females who wanted to troll the trolls to... Own the haters. They spent millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to own the haters and failed miserably. WandaVision, yeah, great. Um, I loved I loved the character of Scarlet Witch. I did. Elizabeth Olsen's portrayal was great in the movies. Get to WandaVision after three episodes, it shits the bed because she gets sad because her sex robot is gone and her imaginary kids got taken away. So... Holds a whole town hostage and then murders a bunch of people throughout a multiverse. Why don't you go back to your home on Whore Island? DC has some female-powered shows as well. The CW's Arrowverse has two series that were anchored by superheroines. Supergirl and Batwoman. Both trash. Both trash. Yeah, Supergirl was so good it got pulled from CBS after one season and shipped to the CW. Batwoman, you guys can just look back at my videos. I don't even need to explain it. While female supporting characters were major players are both Flash and Arrow. Yeah, when the show, when the Flash became more about Team Flash than The Flash, and even Iris West had powers, which nothing against Candace Patton. I know she's faced a lot of criticism. Look, I can forego the race swap if the character was better, okay? But you don't, the show's called The Flash. It's not called The Flash and Friends. Uh, that's basically what it became. Same thing with Arrow. Arrow and Friends. Uh, Batwoman was Batwoman and the fantastic lesbians of Gotham. DC's Legends of Tomorrow made women a major part of the team dynamic. I never watched Legends of Tomorrow. Stargirl, which centered on a show around a heroine. In addition, okay, I've, I've heard that show was actually good. Um, HBO Max side of things, Titans and Doom Patrol. Never wasted my time on either of them. Have female heroes as major players, and even Gunn's Peacemaker, centered around the titular character, has its own slate of excellent female supporting characters. You can't watch Peacemaker and not come away feeling like Amelia Harcourt, Jennifer Holland, and Danielle Brooks all but stole the show. Uh, well, one is James Gunn's wife, that's Jennifer Holland. And Danielle Brooks, Leah Ida. I watched one episode of Peacemaker and was like, this is stupid. I'm done. The audience for the female-centered superhero stories is already there. While the saying goes, if you build it, they will come, the truth is, the fans are already there when it comes to female-centered superhero films. In terms of audience, women already are a major part of the movie-going and overall entertainment consumer audience. That's not a shock. According to the 2019 theme report from the Motion Picture Association, half of moviegoers are female. Again, do they think this is new news or... And as an add-on to this video, it's funny that they talk about, well, the future's female. and We need all these women on screen. And it's like half of the females in the audience don't care if they see female characters. They just want good writing as well. If you ask... Women who aren't insane intersectional feminists, um, man-haters, basic misandrists, if they would rather see a screen populated by nothing but strong female characters who don't need no man, or a well-written story that is organically diverse and inclusive in terms of you know uh, gender representation and things of the like, they're going to always gravitate towards a good, uh, well-constructed story because... They're not all identitarians like the weirdos who wrote this article and the weirdos who work in Hollywood and are like, oh my God, Zs, we need 50% representation of gay people on screen right now, Zs. Like, wait, what? why? There's 6% of the population. Like they said, women make up 40% of the paying audience. So why would you need the entire thing to be female. It, you see what I'm saying? It's like this over-representation, this innate need for over-representation really, really gets in the way of actual progress. Women are also a fast-growing demographic in terms of comic book sales with the numbers making up 40% of purchases. It's also a significant demographic, which on its face suggests the audience is there and the box office numbers will take it a bit further. How'd that work out for uh, Birds of Prey? in the fantastic emancipation of one Harley Quinn that they had to change the name of during the run of the movie because fans didn't understand what it was. 
Marvel's Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which debuted in November 22. It's the highest grossing women-led superhero movie in U.S. history. Oh, Jesus Christ. They really do mental gymnastics to create new metrics to prop these films up as successes. Um, yeah, Maverick, uh, Doctor Strange Mom. I watched half of that and was like, okay, so she's still mad. She can't have her imaginary kids back and the sex robot's gone. All right. Um, let's see. When it comes to the comic book and superhero entertainment landscape, the truth is there needs to be more, here it is, representation across the board. But in terms of the DC universe, bringing in more female characters and meaningful roles will be an excellent start. DC needs to expand beyond the big names like Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn. Stop bringing Harley Quinn in the same sentence as Wonder Woman. For its larger theatrical slate, and has already shown on the small screen how to tell good stories. No, it hasn't with a large array of female heroes, villains, and everything in between. All right, so here is James Gunn, as James Gunn's announced slate. Waller. What? An Amanda Waller spinoff show. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Superman Legacy, the movie featuring the Man of Steel that Gunn is writing and may direct, although no commitment on that end has been made. Uh, it focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment uh, Yada, yada, yada. So, uh, at least he's the embodiment of truth, justice, in the American way, not a better tomorrow, which is stupid. It's supposed to come out in July 2025. Lanterns. Ah, here we go, folks. Greg Berlanti. His long in the works Green Lantern TV series. Don't care. Uh, the Authority. Movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet. First originated in the late 90s. Um, yeah. Paradise Lost. HBO. The duo described this HBO Max series as Game of Thrones style drama. Set on an all female island that is Wonder Woman's birthplace, Themyscira. Filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players. Okay. Uh, the Brave and the Bold. This is the introduction to DCU Batman. Batman sequel. Robert Pattinson's coming back. Booster Gold. That is one big pile of shit. Uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Oh my God, who the hell cares? And Swamp Thing, a horror film that promises to close out the part of the first chapter. There's so little of that that actually even makes me interested in anything DC now. And, and I really hate to harp on this whole it's female-centric thing, but, uh, I mean, they tried to do this with Star Wars, it failed. They tried to do this with Marvel, it's failing. So just use the material you have. Keep, keep the trajectory. I mean, nobody's saying don't bring in female characters, but let's not try to take a, like, Z-tier character and be like, oh, fans are, fans are just dying for this movie when, when they're not. And, and you know that, and it's disingenuous to say otherwise. But now it's your turn. What do you think of the slate announced by James Gunn in DC and the, the future's female of DC? What do you think about that? Uh, let me know in the comments. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, you can join as a channel member, two ninety nine or four ninety nine. I'm Etepo Kuina, the place to be reviews. I've been here with all you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I'll catch you on the next one. Self high five.